But now we've got another ZVP because Zero told us that Eriador Proto uh, picks Protoss versus Zerg. Let's see if he can redeem himself this time versus Castro. Yeah, I'm pretty ex excited to watch his his Protoss uh, if, if he you know does decide to pick that, and I'm uh, assuming that he will. Um, I, I love how uh, my favorite part in, in this game is like right as Eriador is finishing what was a perfectly executed build. Somebody in the chat uh, is just like, wait, who is this area door guy? Luckily, we got our man Xenos guy in there to set the record straight. He is a Leyenda, so uh, super excited to watch him play in this final game versus uh, Castro. I think a lot of Castro's strengths of being able to either uh, play like this really aggressive style. I mean, he, he even felt confident enough to go head uh, head to head uh, against uh, Eon Zerg in the Muta battle. So that, that, that's got to tell you something. Um, but I would love to see my man Ariador move on. I got a chance to meet uh, Ariador at the uh, the 20th anniversary LAN, uh, so I'm I'm just really excited to see how far he can go. And he usually is good enough to make it to the round of 16, even maybe round of eight of uh, of tournaments. But it's hard. It's a it's a hard life of a race picker, and I don't think we've had too many of them advance very far. Uh, so I'm I'm pulling for him, but also the South American hope of Castro. We'll see if he. Uh, can advance on to the round of 16 too because it doesn't get easier after this it's still super difficult so uh we're going back to bloody ridge yeah i'm i'm just surprised at these picks like i don't know how much either player practice them i don't play this map ever never ever so it's gonna be interesting yeah uh, okay, I'm ready. Let's get into it. It's the final match of Group C. One of these players will join Eon Zerg in the round of 16. Let's find out who it's going to be. All right, welcome everybody to the last match of Group C in the upper right hand corner in the brown he just finished playing zerg extremely well but now he's got to play protoss uh this is going to be area door in the bottom left we've got one of the strongest macro zergs it is castro so what do you think of bloody ridge rapid because i already gave my opinion but what's your opinion <laughs> i'm just i'm just glad we don't have to watch a pvt or a pvt on this one Whew. Um, I would say, you know, most maps have like a, a way, like you can look at the map and be like, okay, well, here's my main, here's my natural, here's, you know, where I'm supposed to take my third base. If I get ahead, then maybe I can take this base too. Not, not really the case on, uh, on Bloody Ridge. It is just designed for there to be a lot of blood. Uh, so you get your natural and then you're like, all right, I'd like to take another base. And it's like, where do you go? Because by ground, the third bases are just so far away. So good luck with those, my dude. Uh, especially if you have to play uh, against like early drops. There's just no rules anymore. You could lose anything at any moment. Um, and even if you wanted to take your natural and defend it against mutas, the cliff extends to right behind the mineral line. So you can keep breaking line of sight with the mutas. So it's like, whoo, child, it gets a little rough. Uh, early on, and so I think it favors aggressive play quite a bit. Um, although I do really like the choke points that keep you from just like streaming units across the map. Well, speaking of aggressive, I think there's gonna be a two gate. Is it gonna be a two gate? Ooh, there it is. He called it. Nice. So we've All seen right. this a couple times. I think the last time we saw it on multiverse, we see it quite a bit. And I don't know how this is really gonna work on a two player map because Overlord's already almost here, so Castro's gonna see it. But Ariador has decided he's not messing around. He wants to punish with a bunch of zealots. Now, remember, he's an old school player. And back in the old school days, what you would do, three zealots, three probes. That's a lot of DPS. So this could be a very quick game if Castro underestimates the damage output. We already see drones being made from his side. So I'm already extremely Ooh. worried. And remember last game, I was pointing out how you could potentially send zealot or lings along the side. Look at this. The zealots already hidden out of view. Now he's going to see at least one gate, but he doesn't see any zealots pop out just yet. Yeah, I mean, he will have the Overlord. I think he can kind of predict that. Um, oh, he's going to come down to low ground, so he will just definitely now be able to it. see the Overlords there. So zealot popping out. He's going to see the two zealots, and I think it's time to go. The two gate, the jig is up. It's time. 
to head across the map, and there is going to be that uh, that probe which survives to rejoin his zealot brothers, and especially with now the third zealot popping out. We got to go. Uh, there's actually, wait, is there a second hatchery? This is three hatch. What? Three hatch, third hatch in the main. But here yeah. comes Ariador. I am a little surprised you didn't send any more pros with this. It's going to be three zealots, one probe. Oh, good control right there. Oh. And this is a macro two gate. This was not nine nine. This was ten twelve. I'm paying attention to this nexus. He's not pumping out more probes, but he could potentially trans transition out of this. Still two zealots at a time being made behind this. Uh, a lot of pressure being put on, but the, the link count is actually pretty large. Oh, don't want to get your zealots caught out like that. Starting to deal a little bit of damage, but pinning one of the zealots against the wall. Absolutely gigantic, taking that out but now the zealot reinforcements are starting to come through it's three zealots and a probe the dream but with a sunken finishing i don't know if ariador is really going to be able to get anything done here yeah this was not the damage that ariador was looking for and again lucky for castro ariador was not teching behind it he is just going to take a nexus i have a feeling that we're going to see a hydra bust pretty soon he's got his gas going up he's got sunkens coming in just going to play defensively for now uh, and that wow. Overlord is still there, so <laughs> he is going to be able to defend any fast DTs to come out. But we see that that's not going to happen. So I really do think this is going to yeah. be a Hydra bust. I mean, I think anytime you see this construction at the front of your opponent's base, it's just two like juicy gateways just offered up out there. Uh, yeah, you're probably going to have a good time with a bust like that. Uh, and I mean, you're, you're rock solid. You had to overproduce things, so obviously that sucks as a Zerg player, but you know, you, you didn't die. So, man, this is this is a kind of a weird start. I never see both players just build a lot of units and have this Cold War stalemate. Um, but I think, yeah, by far this is better for uh, for Castro, who has like kind of like a, a clear roadmap uh, of what would be a really great way to play this game with the Hydra Bust. Well, Hydra Den is about to finish. I like the arc that Ariador has. So Lings are definitely not going to get out. He's going to trade favorably. Cybernetics is a little bit over half. He's got his forge coming up. Most likely we're gonna see, I would assume probably something, well, I don't know if he can get away with the four gate zealot. I would like to see straight into Templar tech to try and to defend this incoming Hydra play. Because I, I do think that, not that it's obvious, but if I was in Eridor's position, I would highly suspect that some type of Hydra play is coming because of like what you said, if I can kill two gates for free, I'm gonna go kill him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not only does that really set your opponent's production behind, it's uh, a bunch of damage, and there's basically no recourse. Like, I, I mean, I mean, these are zealots; they don't have like speed or anything. You're definitely not going to expect that. So, fast hydras versus slow zealots always a kind of a good, a good battle to fight. And also, you have just a bunch of links. So, let's see what it's going to do here. Speed about to finish up. Uh, there are cannons morphing in back at home, um, but there's only one at the front door. So that is. Yeah, one is basically nothing. So we saw a little cute move that Ariador just did right now. He sent in a Zealot to try and see exactly what's going on, see if there's any Hydras popping out, but he also confirmed there's no second gas. And when there's no second gas, chances of you going Mutas are very low, but despite that, he's still building Sarah, so this might be a big misstep. He needs to start putting up a lot of cannons pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, that's the that's one of the, uh, the real... Uh, vulnerabilities of, of Protoss because if you see if, that there's no second gas and in a, in a more standard game uh, you would say okay well I'm gonna get hydra busted so you really prepare for that and the Zerg player then doesn't really have to commit uh, to it but this time it's, it's, it's much different obviously because you're pretty sure that that's what's coming your way um, so what uh, when, when are we gonna pull the trigger on this one it looks like the answer is now and that zealot wall at the front is not going to be enough it might delay the inevitable, but it's coming. And especially with Lings slipping through, Castro just playing this beautifully. Everything dies at the front, and Ariador really overstaying his welcome there. Now behind this, there's no lair. So there's a lack of tech from Castro, but he's got good drone saturation, so he'll be able to still go into mid-late game very nicely. And Ariador scrambling to get up cannons, but we've got... Oh, I thought it was going to be an Artosis pylon. Luckily, Eriador has put down a backup pilot in the back, but it's going to shut down all of the left side cannons. Oh, it doesn't matter. He's just going to kill the cannon straight up. 
Yeah, and these cannons, they do not warp in that quickly. Only one, two, now three. The probe's being pulled. The gateway is actually not taking any damage. He tried to dive through and kill the cannons, which almost worked. Now he's going to pull back, take out the gateways. And how many cannons are going to get up here? It looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, lots. So I don't know if this Hydra push is going to go any further. He's going to try moving forward, targeting down the cannons. The probe's trying to, de to uh, like buffer as much as they can, but there's no units here. Nothing left to defend. The Hydra count is still huge. More probes being pulled off the line, but the cannons are dropping one by one. And no Reaver is going to come out fast enough to save this. The final cannon about to fall. Will the Hydras do it? They do. A GG. Area door taps out, and Castro advances on to the round of 16. Yeah, and Castro just showing us the strong macro. Really just hitting at a really nice time, just like Eriador hit versus Cryok, and just a misread from Eriador. So unfortunately, one of the fan favorites is going to be knocked out in the first first group stages. But we've got two great players moving out. I think I would have predicted Eon Serg and Castro coming out of that group. And I'm really interested to see how far Castro goes, because like I said, if you let him go unhindered, this guy, he explodes, and I want to see yeah. him explode versus one of these Terrans that we're going to see in our second group. Yeah, if you are a history buff, you might have also expected the exact same thing from uh, a player with that name. But uh, also seeing Eon Zerg advance out uh, very, uh, very impressively. It just uh, can't. I, I just love watching Eon Zerg play games. It's almost as if there's a way that you can do that just almost every day because uh, he does stream quite a bit so go check him out uh, and of course we'll be checking him out a lot in the next round of the tournament so really looking forward to that but that's going to do it for group c so congratulations to eon zerg and castro that will move on to join the players that qualified from uh, day number one for groups a and b we have to move on to group d and that means that we're going to be watching dan max casper spx and abby love coming up next after a short break. So we're going to take about five, six minutes, and then we'll come back with Group D. So don't go anywhere. I hope you guys are enjoying the brand new Season 7 of the BSL. We'll be right back. 